All right, Netflix's live-action Avatar. We've finally seen some footage. It's only been, oh, God, over five years since it was announced. Well, I mean, good things take time, <laughs> I hope. Don't want to repeat of that last live-action train wreck if we can help it. But all right, you guys know the deal. Overanalyzing Avatar. Let's take a look at this footage and see what we can glean from what they've shown us. I'll try to point out moments I think are happening and where they line up with the original show, as well as locations, characters, whatever my brain that is riddled with needless amounts of Avatar knowledge can find, you'll hear about it. If a lot of this video is just still frames, it's because the trailer is super new. There will be copyright snipers all over the place looking to take videos out. So I'm going to see how much I can get away with, but we're going to have to make do here. Maybe pull up the trailer on your own to follow along on another tab. You might even hear some opinions too. Who knows? I'm fucking crazy. All right, let's see what we can find. So our first image is of Sosin's Comet in the sky, which is an interesting start. We shouldn't be ready to see that until the end of the show. But actually, it turns out that this is a flashback to when the air temples were attacked 100 years ago. We never even see a single hint of this in the original show. So leading off the very first footage we ever see of the show with this implies to me that this will be a very very different ride. Seems like we may even get to see some proper airbending action from the monks. It's hard to tell which air temple this is just from these scant shots, but it's definitely not the western, I'll tell you that. It doesn't exactly look like the southern air temple where Aang is from, but thinking about it and how the story is probably going to be told, it most likely is. Time is a funny thing. We also hear some narration for the first half of the teaser, speaking largely about time, and I believe referring to maybe Aang's struggle with his identity as the Avatar. There's no direct analog to this in the show, but I bet what's being said is probably supposed to be being said by Roku during his first talk with Aang on the Winter Solstice. Next, we're introduced to our characters and some visuals we've been dying to see. We finally get to see Katara and Sokka in the moment they discover the iceberg. And I gotta say, honestly, no notes, the scale feels grand, and I think our characters look great. Their parkas are, of course, more designed than they were in the show, which I think is fine. It would have looked a little strange and cheap to have them in just plain blue parkas. Now we get a shot of Omashu, and yeah, it looks a little computer generated y, but like, what, you were expecting them to build this place? What the fuck do you want from them? Also, when the door to Omashu open, there seems to be some sort of cabbage card here. I don't know why they would include that. Seems like a really weird thing to have there. Never seen that before. Now we get our first shots of Iroh and Zuko, and I gotta say, they're probably about the best you're ever gonna get in a live-action adaptation. The scene they're shown in is interesting, though. This scene doesn't take place in season one of the original show. This seems to be the scene of Zuko approaching Azula's ship when she first lies to him to capture him. And we know that Azula is being introduced in season one of this adaptation, so this is very likely that moment. Zuko certainly isn't shown this level of reverence ever in season one. It's also strange to note, he seems to be wearing the sheath for his swords on his back, but his swords don't seem to be there. Zuko loses his first set of swords in the cartoon when his ship gets nuked by pirates, and doesn't get a second pair until three episodes after this scene takes place. Next is a weird nothing shot of a bird near a tower, but this could be the bird going to the tower at the start of the Blue Spirit, carrying news of Zhao's promotion. Now we have a shot of the Fire Throne, and it seems like there might actually be like a chair component to it, unlike in the show. And our first shot of Ozai, which is, eh, I'm not a big fan of it, I like that they kept Ozai in shadow in the original show until Zuko saw him again, but I get it, that severely limits what you can do with a character in this new adaptation. I think he looks pretty good though. Then we have three pretty mundane shots of Suki, Suki and Sokka, and the Kyoshi Warriors training. This all very clearly takes place in the dojo on Kyoshi Island, and I gotta say, pretty stellar set design, it looks just like the show did. Sokka doesn't seem to be dressed in a Kyoshi outfit here, so this is probably the scene near the start of the episode where he comes in and interrupts and is just generally a dick. Now we see Aang approach Crescent Island, but the strange thing is, he's on his glider. Aang never goes to Crescent Island by gliding. The first time, he was with the gang on Appa, and then the second time, he didn't even mean to end up there. He just went for a midnight surf, and that shit got way out of hand. And we finally get our first shot of Aang, in motion. Well, in the trailer, at least, not in this video. And yes, I continue to say, this is probably about as good as you're gonna get, visually at least, from a cartoon into live action. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be a popular opinion, but that's how I feel. I think everyone looks pretty great. Now we get a shot of Aang being sad in a burned down forest, which is definitely when Aang was sad in a burned down forest forest in the episode The Winter Solstice Part 1. This shot, combined with the shot of him visiting Crescent Island and therefore Roku's spirit, pretty much confirms to me that at least The Winter Solstice two-parter will play out at least roughly the same. Next, we are witness to Zuko's burning at his Agni Kai against his father. In the original show, you kind of get the idea that Zuko refuses to defend himself at all, but at least in this shot, we see Zuko blocking an attack. Which is a little odd, since Zuko's banishment was actually due to him not participating in the duel against his father. But maybe Ozai is just mad that Zuko refuses to attack, is the thing, maybe? Next, we have someone putting up a picture of Aang on a board that has like maps and stuff on it. At first I thought this might be Zhao, but I think this dude has a shaved head. I think it's Zuko. Next we have a shot where Iroh and Zuko are threatened by some off-screen force, and Zuko does a kick. And honestly, the fire effect, the small amount that we see, doesn't look bad. We don't get to see it form a projectile or anything, so we'll still have to wait and see. I'll wager that this scene takes place during the Winter Solstice episodes as well, because we know that those episodes are happening, and Iroh is dressed really weirdly. In the cartoon, he's kidnapped and taken down a road, mostly naked 
by Earth Kingdom soldiers. I think this is probably that scene, but instead of leaving him naked, they probably just found something to throw on him. And this fight scene that seems to take place on just some road is probably their fight scene against those Earth Kingdom soldiers. Shot of Azula in the throne room, the only time we ever see her in there in season one was the very last scene where Ozai tells her to go capture her brother and uncle. This could be the same scene, but probably much earlier on in the season considering what we know. Sokka and Katara holding lantern somewhere, now that never actually happens except for Sokka in the extended opening in the very first episode of the show. Aang's tattoos glowing while he meditates happens at the Spirit Oasis in the North Pole. Weirdly though, he seems to be indoors, when the Spirit Oasis is definitely outdoors in the cartoon. Here we see the attack on Kyoshi Island, lovely attention to detail that it's on a slight incline just like in the show. Then we see someone drop from the sky and send everyone flying with airbending. Now the thing is though, it looks like this person is wearing green, at least definitely not Aang's colors. And we also know that Avatar Kyoshi has been cast and is appearing in season one of this show. I'll bet you this is Kyoshi coming up to lay waste on some get off my island type beat. Shot of Appa flying off away from some Fire Nation soldiers, and I mean that could be any number of situations. Then we have some shots of the gang flying through the Batola mountain range near the Southern Air Temple. This is straight out of the original show. And we meet Punished Momo. My man has seen better days. Our final shot is of the gang undoubtedly approaching the beach of Kyoshi Island, since Aang will want to go there to ride the elephant koi. And then the whole Suki thing, and Kyoshi probably show up. And that's it. That's all we get. Minute and a half. And you know, honestly, guys, I don't think it looks too bad. I know we don't get a lot. No dialogue, no real fighting effects. There's still a lot that has to be done right for this show to be good. But judging it just from this, man, I think they might do it. I think the biggest question still is the tone. Like I said, I think our characters look great. It seems like from the scenes they're referencing, they touch on some very important parts. But the tone is what will sell it. Will it be directed more at kids, adults, fans of the show? Are you going to try to get new fans? Or are you going to try and find a balance of everything? That's really what I think it comes down to now. Because I think the visuals are taken care of, at least from what I can see here. It comes down to the writing and tone. I see this, and I think we've got a chance. Some kind of chance. I guess we'll see February 22nd. This is where I usually do my patron shoutouts, but I'm just gonna do one of these real quick. If you're just finding my channel because you're interested in Netflix's Avatar, you should subscribe because I'll be covering it extensively. You'll probably be waiting to my other videos too, called Overanalyzing Avatar, where I go episode by episode and talk about, like, actually everything about the show. You know, writing, themes, easter eggs, animation flubs, jokes you didn't catch, everything. I've also covered all the Avatar The Last Airbender comics, and I've even started doing Overanalyzing Korra recently. So yeah, give my other videos a go. Everyone seems to think they're not so bad. There will be a link to the playlists in the description. Patrons, I'm sorry, your shoutouts are gonna have to wait until the next regularly scheduled video. I had to pump this shit out as fast as I could. Just know that I love you all.